Could you guys just give Heidi an amazing hand here? We're so blessed to have her in the house. We call her Mama Ida. <laughs> oh, bless you guys. Thank you so much for loving Jesus and being here and blessing us. We're undone. Um, oh, just coming in, I, I just felt so blessed. Rebecca and I came in together and we've been undone, even already in the green room. We got so undone. And then, Jake, come on. You're just, <laughs> I, I was watching, I was like, God, Daddy, God loves watching him play. Not just hearing him, but watching him. It's just, it's true, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, I am so happy to be here. Leif and Jennifer, thank you. Mike and Christy. And we're, we're just undone already. We, we, we just got here. We're so undone already. Oh, Jesus. Oh, can we just lift our hands uh, and, and just love on him? Just... Yeah, I know we've been loving on him all. Oh, but he's just so beautiful. Just just love on him. However you like to love on him. I was Yeah, maybe you maybe I don't know if you like to sing in the spirit. Uh, or you like to just tell him or you like to sit in silence, but as we were worshiping tonight and we were singing about fire and gasoline, <laughs> I thought, oh, wow, oil, Lord. Give us more oil, Lord. The oil of intimacy, God. We, we want to burn. <laughs> Oh, we want to burn, God. We want to burn, burn, burn. But we never want to go out. God, we want to be like the five wise virgins that were ready, 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 ready. They had so much oil, God. Oh, reti di andai. So let's just, let's just give them a little, little time right now. And just, if you've never sung in the spirit before, this is a great time to just, just, just start. You just start singing, singing to him a love song until you run out of words in every language you know. And all you have left are the heavenly languages until the angels start to join in with us. Oh, kitty See, Daddy God, he loves it when his children start to sing together. When his family starts to come together, love together, sing together. Just the sound, the sound, the sound of love. Oh, riande, andie, kiriande, diriae, oh, yeah, Jesus, Jesus. Would you pour out oil tonight? Would you pour out oil tonight? Would you pour out oil, God? God, as people are just laid out on the altar, as they're just laid out on the altar, as they're given on the altar, as they're just laid out and saying, God, I'll be a vessel. I'll be a vessel. Lord, I'll be a vessel. I'll be a vessel, Lord. Pick me up like a paintbrush. Oh, yeah. Pick me up like a paintbrush. Oh, yeah. Fill me up, Lord. Oh, overflowing God. 
until everywhere I go, Lord, they can feel your love. They can feel your presence. They can feel you, God. Oriande, fill me up, Lord. Oriande, connect, 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 connect. Lord, I just pray, God, no disconnect. Lord, no disconnect. Oh, face to face, face to face. Face to face, face to face, heart to heart. You can come closer. You can come closer, 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 closer. You can come closer, closer. Face to face, heart to heart. Shokaraba shotaroba shandaraba Jesus, 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 Jesus. Just, just for a few minutes as, as you're just worshiping and meditating on him. I just feel to start with these words. Just, just keep pressing in just for a few minutes. There's something about just coming together and hearing what's going on in this city that just brought so much joy to my heart. And I just thought, oh God, how do you feel as your children come and dwell together in unity? As they put aside their differences and they just say, we will come and worship together. We will come and love together. We will come and care for the needy together. We will come and care for the underserved together. We will come and love you together. We will put aside everything that hinders us. And we will come together because you are worthy and you're a good, good daddy. And whoa, I... I this wasn't part of the message, but it is now. It is now. I felt just to read from John 17. And it's Jesus who's praying for all believers. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. Wow. I don't think you understood the words of Jesus. I, I, think, I think I haven't understood these words. Ah, oh, Jesus, what would it mean? What would it mean if we really dwelt together in the kind of unity that you're talking about, the unity of the Trinity? What would it mean? I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message that all of them may be one Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them and you in me, may they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them. You have loved them. Jesus said, even as the Father loved him. And there was no disconnect between the Father and the Son. They were connected. They were connected. So connected. Oh God, 
would you, would you bring us into this place of deeper connection with you and with one another, God, until the world would know that we are believers, that we are Christians by our love. feel like Jesus, when he wept those tears, those tears of blood in Gethsemane, it was as he was anticipating the horror of being disconnected from his father. The horror of it. And yet he said yes, so that all of us could be connected to his father. Jesus, oh Jesus, we never want to take what you did on that cross for granted. And we never want to forget your prayer in John 17 that you've been praying for all eternity. Since the beginning of creation, you pray that we would be one as you and the Father are one, God. Lord, I ask, I ask, Lord, I ask, I ask kneeling down, laying down, bowing down, God, I ask that you would rip out of us the things that divide us and keep us from power from love, from wisdom, from the emergence of the convergence that you long for in your body where your river, Holy Spirit, could flow into every part of the earth where there is dying and crying and brokenness and your life would burst forth. God... God, I, I, I can't, I can't impart intimacy. But Lord, I pray, I pray, pray that there would be a holy hunger rise up, that we would see that, Lord, that there's more, there's more connection and communion and love and power and wisdom that you want to pour forth in this world through your people. Oh God, would you take us to a place of holy abandonments where we understand the face of grace and all fear dissipates and love wins. Yes, Lord. Amen and amen. Wow. Oh, Jesus. I have made you known, he says. Jesus said, I have made you known. He's made the Father known to us. And I will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. Is that what we want? Do we want that kind of radical love? I think I've freaked some of you out here. So I'm going to tell a story. It helps. It helps sometimes because um, I'm very, I'm very, very, very passionate. I'm frighteningly, frighteningly passionate. And I can't help myself. I'm in love. I fell in love with Jesus. And uh, I was 16 years old. And every day I just keep 
getting closer and closer, and I didn't even know it was possible. And Roland was driving me to the airport today, and I just started weeping in the car, saying, I just love Jesus so much. I just love Jesus so much. I just love Jesus so much. He is worthy of it all. But this, this story comes a little bit out of some of Jake's songs tonight. Okay, I'm, all, I, I'm gonna tell a few stories, but we just kept hitting this place. You know, we just kept hitting this place. And there was something about this, the diversity of the band, but it was so awesomely wonderful that they could all play. Sometimes um, we come together in diversity and we just, but we, we don't actually, we can't actually play together. <laughs> so you got the drummer and, you know, and the, and the other guy's playing a different note and, and you're like, we want to be one. <laughs> and it's just painful. And, and, and that's somehow how it feels when we, we try to push ourselves into unity gatherings. We will be one. We're having a coffee breakfast. <laughs> and one guy's a vegan and one loves Dunkin' Donuts. And the other one's on some kind of protein thing where you can't have any carbohydrates at all and your unity breakfast hit the dust before it even started. It's like, God, this is so painful. It's, I mean, we got to be real. It's not, and then, and then you, what you, I'm thinking of fire, you know, and come on, burn, Jesus, burn everything away that you want to burn. And then, so I'm, this is my church, Sunday morning. This really happened. This, I mean, some of you have been there will understand. This is, this is real life, Sunday morning in our church. No fire codes. I had this idea when I woke up in the morning that I was going to preach from John 15. And that because, you know, we've, we have about 20 nations, 25 nations there and people from zero education to PhDs and everything in between. And I was like, it's like 16 languages and three translations. And it's like, unity's awesome. And I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use props, okay? Some of you don't think I would ever use props. I do in my country. I use props. So I'm like cutting down branches, like five in the morning, sawing down branches, finding dead ones, finding alive ones. I'm getting, I'm getting a, a katana. What's that in English? I'm, a, a machete. I'm getting a machete. Big katana. That's a better word for it. A big katana. I'm going to chop away and I'm going to burn up the branches that don't bear fruit. And I got a bunch of kids that will hold up the other ones. And I'm going to do this so they're going to remember it, right? Because we are supposed to burn. But there's several kinds of burning. So there's a good kind of burning, burning fire, this fire burning. And I, I've always laughed about that song until Jake sang it tonight. I'm like, I mean, he just wrecked my point. Because I used to say, I hate that song. I mean, in love, I don't hate the person who wrote it. But this little light of mine, I thought, that is the pitiful song. And don't let Satan it out. And then he sang, and you didn't, like, talk about Satan. And I loved it. It just, we just kept shining. That's awesome. But how do we shine? We shine when we have oil. And what happens when we don't have the oil of intimacy and the fire of God hits us? Maybe you went to some awesome conference and the fire of God fell on you. And it was just glorious. But you didn't know how to connect with God on Monday. 
Monday came and you're like, I'm so burned up. I'm so burned up. I can't even move. And all the burning was like glorious in the moment in the sense that you could feel God. And then you just felt undone in a horrible way. Because the oil of intimacy wasn't being refilled in your life because you can't get a life of intimacy at a conference. You can't get it at a gathering. It, it, is a, it is a passion that comes the more you know him, the more you love him, the more you give him honor and glory and the trust, the trust. You start trusting God. And we're asking for unity in the body of Christ, right? Did y'all y'all have a Bible <laughs> on your phone or somewhere? John 17. But the body's kind of strange. And 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 really you do look at the body and and if you actually I've traveled now since I got hit with that fire fire of the Holy Ghost. I've traveled to 111 nations preaching the gospel. Come on. So I have seen the body of Christ. <laughs> you know what? That's cool because when the fire hit me, I didn't want to go anywhere but my own country. My country's Mozambique. I still have an American passport and I'm trying to get a grip on that. And the Lord's helping me. But I never wanted to leave my country and I never wanted to leave the garbage dump because that was the happiest place on the planet. And by the way, it was always burning. Always burning. <laughs> That's interesting. But the body of Christ when you meet the body of Christ, if you don't love the body of Christ, um, you have no authority in the body of Christ. And, and to love the body means that you're going to love the odd bits. You're going to love the odd bits of the body. Some of you go in places you're not supposed to go. I'm talking about the kind of um, this unity in, in convergence. It's, 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 it sounds so awesome when you talk about power and love and wisdom and convergence until you start trying it. And then it's just like, oh, 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 Lord, what's going on? This is a frightening place. So back to my prop story, Sunday morning. I'm chopping down the trees and I'm going to preach on John 15 and we're going to have to, we're going to have to do three languages. So I'm going to really keep, try to keep this going. I'm thinking of translating for myself um, and thinking, oh, I don't know, should I do two languages? Should I try three? Should I just, you know, put some branches out there and hope the kids join in for the theater. I, I, I'm trying to figure it out. I didn't know exactly what to do. And some of you are saying, well, that's what's happening right now. Don't worry. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come around. I think. I, I pray. But I was there and I start talking about how we're connected to Jesus and we can do nothing without Jesus. Do you all believe that? And then I said, and we can do nothing without the body of Christ. Do you believe that? <laughs> I didn't. I didn't believe that. Um, they've, been, they've been very kind in, in introducing me. But I, I, I want to tell you, I, I'm a bit of a rascal. I'm actually a rascal. But uh, God's like, he's taming the rascal. But at the same time, he's making me more fiery. Is that okay? 
So this is how it was. I, I, didn't, um, I didn't really like the body of Christ for a long, long time. I, I was um, saved at 16, filled with the Holy Spirit in a Pentecostal holiness church. I became a holy roller day two, rolling up and down. My Ivy League Bohemian parents thought I had lost my mind, tried to get me a psychologist to deprogram me. Uh, I mean, the whole thing was very odd. And I, 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 I was so excited about this newfound faith and Holy Spirit and shakarabha. And I just would speak in tongues everywhere at all times to everyone. I thought people would be saved. I'd just look at you, shakarabha, shay. And I thought you'd be saved just because I spoke in tongues. Why wouldn't you be? It's, it's amazing, shakarabha, ray. And, and people would just look at me like, whoa, she needs some help. And, and that was just kind of how it was going. And, and I thought, a, a, a God spoke to me at the age of 16 in a vision, a big, bright, white light. Not big, just bright white, covered everything beyond big. Covered me, and I heard the audible voice of God. I've only heard the external audible voice of God one time. Some people just have a frequent flyer pass in there. I, I go up and down to heaven all the time, up and down. Do you want, want to go? Want to go with me? I mean, seriously, dude. I, I think it would affect you. So anyway, that's another story. But I, I only, I've only heard the external audible voice of God one time. I'm a 16-year-old girl from Laguna Beach on my knees worshiping Jesus. I hear him say, you're called to be a minister and a missionary. I didn't even know what a missionary was. To go to Africa, Asia, and England. The Lord kissed my hand. Oil ran down my arm. I was completely undone. And the next day, I stepped out on the street and started preaching the gospel. I have never stopped preaching the gospel. I've been preaching the gospel since I was 16 years old. But I didn't ever believe or imagine or think or desire or want to ever go into a church to preach the gospel. Why would I do that when people were out there dying? And then the Lord, when I got hit by the fire, and Randy Clark laid his hot hand on my head, suddenly I was asked to go. I'm like, what do they want me to go for? I, I usually, since Holy Spirit hit me in that way, I usually laid on my face and went, wow, oh. And they asked me to come back. It was bizarre. It went on like that for about four years. I'm serious. I, people say, have you ever looked at that? I said, no. No way. There's no way I would look at that. Oh, Jesus, that's so embarrassing. I never wanted to look stupid. Never wanted to look foolish. And I, I looked, though, but at that time, when God was touching me and putting love in my heart for all of you, really, I'm not joking now. I'm not, none of it's a joke, actually. I, I started getting filled with this love for the body of Christ, and it started to happen. Some of you heard my story. I'm going to give it fast, but it was not being able to move for seven days and seven nights, not being able to do anything for myself. I needed the body of Christ. I needed you. And I told God why I didn't need you, especially first world people, anybody in the Western world, anyone in the first world, Asian world, anybody with means, I did not need you. Because I somehow thought by serving the poor, living in the slums, laying down in, among the poorest, desperate people of the planet, somehow we were more spiritual. What a hideous thing. I judged you. And I'm sorry. I didn't understand you. And I'm sorry. And for the last 20 
four and a half years, I have been falling in love with the body of Christ. I have been falling in love with the body of Christ, with the beauty of the body of Christ in their diversity. I've been, I've been seeing them. I mean, one time, I'm going back to the props, don't worry. But one time, I was, I was in three days. I'm going to give you an example of these meetings. I was in Ukraine, and I was in a Jewish church, a Jewish church. Jewish believers, completed Jews, and they are dressed up. I mean, they're Jewish. They're not half Jewish. I'm an eighth Jewish. I thought I was more, but DNA tests, I'm only an eighth. Anyway, never mind. Hey, whatever. I got some in there. And they're so, but they're like 100%. They're, they're the real deal. They're speaking Hebrew. They're dancing. They're leaping. They're, they're just doing it. You know, they got the beards, they got the skirts, they're going for it. They're just dead. And they were so happy. And it was all about being Jewish. And it was beautiful. It was Jewish who love Yeshua. And I was having a blast. And, and I was saying, this is awesome. And then I got to the next place. It was in Poland. And, and, the, and the, my, 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 uh, I'm thinking in Portuguese. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, Hosts, my host came and they said, um, well, you know, we have good news and bad news. I said, okay, okay. Well, well great. What, what do you want to know first? I said, it's good. It's all good. What do you want to tell me? They said, well, the good news is you're in the same hotel. I said, great. You know, I never ask anyone where to put me. I never know where I'm going. I don't even know till somebody picks me up, most likely. Uh, I don't know. The Lord said, never ask where to go, never ask where to stay, never ask, never ask. My list is water, possibly, if you really push me. And so I'm going, and I don't know what's going on. And they said, well, you know, we've got, um, the Catholics really wanted you to come. And the Pentecostals really wanted you to come. And so we got together in unity and we decided to put you in the same hotel. That's awesome. But they say we couldn't do our meetings together. <laughs> but you're going to speak at both of them. And you get to be in the same hotel. I thought, well, hey, that's better than nothing. They're moving towards the direction, you know. <laughs> so you're like, what? What? You said that what word? Oh, yeah. God has people all over the place. It would shock you to find out who actually loves Jesus. It would shock you. It would, it would, it would probably upset you who loves Jesus. You'd be like, they can't. They don't. It's not possible. No, no. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. Like, no, they're actually dead. We're alive and they're dead. We're alive and they're dead. They're so dead. We're so alive. They're so dead. And we're so alive. We're so shiny and full and full of renewal fire. And they're so dead. That just really helps with the unity. Everybody just can't wait to go and embrace you. All of the corpses are just running into your doors where the fire's falling. You know, attitude matters. Love matters. Humility matters. Understanding that somebody might have something that you don't have matters. Understanding that you will never have all that you need by yourself matters. Knowing we need each other matters. Knowing that if we're connected to Jesus, all things are possible. But those all things are possible are only possible when you connect with the body of Christ. But some of the body of Christ is so strange. So very, very strange. I mean, went into the Pentecostal meeting. 
It was, it was wonderful. They were shouting and hooting and hollering and flopping and flying. It was awesome. Went back to the hotel room, got picked up by the Catholics. <laughs> they, were, they were wearing different clothes, singing the same songs mostly, having a different way. And I thought, what is going on, Lord? I'm confused. I'm confused. I've just been with the Jews and the Pentecostals and the Catholics, and you are showing up everywhere, and it's really confusing <laughs> what is going on and he started reminding me of our children <laughs> you guys who know us know we have a massive family it's we think it's one size we claim we claim 17 but we actually have a whole lot more <laughs> so if 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 you ask which one's ours they're going to be they they will punch I mean, they will actually punch. That's not very Christian, but it's, it's, it's true. They'll actually whack their brother. That's my mom. Anyway, it's very sweet <laughs> in this sort of way. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about my children, thinking about rolling my kids. I'm thinking about the, we have two that look like us. One actually looks like me, she's a girl. One looks like Roland, he's a boy. They're both toe-head blots, they can't help it. They're both blue-eyed. There's no chance of any other thing happening in our gene pool. They're going to be blue-eyed blondes, that's it. Crystal and my daughter married a blue-eyed dark blonde, and she said, Mom, pray for our children to be brown. I said, Honey, sweetheart, your children, you're natural born. They're not going to be brown, honey. She's like, Mom, but pray. Seriously, you've got to pray. I said, I can pray, honey. But your natural children, they're going to have blue eyes and blonde hair. She's like, oh, she started crying. It's just what happens. It's just what happens. But then the larger family, the other kids, we look like a family of crayons. Our family seriously looks like crayons because our black kids, some of them married Asians, some of them married white, some of them married black, some of them married mixed black, some of them married black black. We look like a crayon box. And when, they, when we have our family gathering every Sunday when we're at home, people look at us and go, who are you people? Who are you people? I said, we're a family. Well, how are you a family? And then every family has its really odd ones. No, just mine. Not yours. Is yours all like everybody's kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya. Everybody's perfect and happy all the time. Is that your family? I don't know. Our family gets little, you know, no, you don't. Or you do. Uh, at times, there's slight dysfunction going on. I'm reading this through the eyes of John 17. Because like, really, Jesus? Have you seen the body of Christ? How long are you going to pray that prayer? It's really, have you seen our family? <laughs> We love each other. We absolutely love each other. But there is so much going on. And everybody wants to participate. So I'm going back to my story. But I'm going to read a little bit more scripture. And, and if you need to leave, just slip, slip out the door quietly. But not a hundred at a time. It's just distracting. But, you know, one or two, go get your kids. It's not time yet. But if you kind of want to use that as an excuse it works 
It works just perfectly. Um, Colossians 1. For this reason, since the day we heard about you, we haven't stopped praying for you, asking God to fill you with knowledge. Knowledge, wisdom, knowledge. The knowledge of his will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. We pray this in order that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and you may please him in every way, bearing fruit. Yes! Masses amount of fruit in every good work. What? In every? <laughs> so we're connected to Jesus, connected to the body of Christ, bearing fruit in every good work. It means love looks like something. Love looks like something all the time. Are you guys okay? Are you tired? Like you've been here since 6 a.m. or something. Why? Well, how many meetings have you had already? I got it. Four? What? Anyway, wake up. We're almost finished. Wake up. This is this is this is something. I, I don't know. I love this. This prayer of Paul being we're being strengthened in all wisdom and power so I'm thinking about this and I, this is a book that I live in and now I'm thinking how how much I want to show the church about fruit bearing and getting rid of sin and getting rid of evil and getting rid of idols and burning it all up and I'm ready to go and our family's all there of course we're all there some of them are running around doing cartwheels and backflips. It's really cool. <laughs> Our worship team's awesome. They can jump about this high off the ground for two and a half hours. No joke. Whew. Anyway, it's a cool. So, so I got this thing and I've got my, my props, my branches, my, my machete, my, my fruit. I got fruit. I called some of my kids. I called Sergio. I go, can you, can you do me a favor? He's like, sure, mom, what do you need? I said, I need like 2,000 bananas <laughs> in an hour. He said, no problem. Do you want any other kind of fruit? I said, yeah, find out what kind of fruits, you know, on sale in the market. He's like, wow, okay, we're going to get it. All right, 2,000 plus bananas. I said, and you better get, you know, 1,000 of some other fruit. And and because um, we wanted, I wanted to show this drama, you know. I was being filled with knowledge. The wisdom, spiritual wisdom coming from heaven that if they saw this, they could understand it. And wow, God would just get them. So I needed, I needed them to taste the fruits, really taste it. And I needed them to sense what was going on and, and see it. And so I decided I was going to light a real fire in church. You know, just a, a normal fire because we don't have carpet or anything. I was just going to put it on the cement floor and light it, and it was going to be beautiful. It was going to be really powerful. They would get the point, and we had, you know, hundreds of baskets. Um, I don't know how many baskets. I'm, I'm not a counter. If some of you are like, how many baskets? How many fruit? How many were in the baskets of fruit? I don't know. I love the body of Christ. I love the counters. What do you do without the counters? You don't pass audits, that's for sure. You need counters. If you want to feed millions of people, you need hundreds of counters. Counters are amazing, but I'm not one of them. I have a different thing going on. So, so the counters are counting the fruit, looking at how many people we have, thinking, I don't know, we did we get enough? I don't know. I'm like, just pray it'll multiply. And I'm I'm setting, uh, I'm talking about Jesus and the branch and how he cuts off everything that doesn't bear fruit. And then um, I'm 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 saying, and God wants to burn away everything in your life that doesn't bear fruit. And suddenly all these people are just like, just quick, ah! I'm looking at these faces thinking, what did I say? 
and I turn around and my most challenging son, who I call son, my most challenging of all, times 10, decided to help me with the illustration. So George goes out <laughs> and gets combustible gasoline. That's why I got this message, see, from your song. George goes out, he gets gasoline. I don't know, I was preaching for a while. So he goes out, he gets an entire bidon, a whole thing of gasoline, and he pours it on the fire. And the fire went up, our roof's about like this high. The fire went up to the roof, massive, like we could hear it. Everybody's cooking. It's already 120 in there. And now there's a fire going to the roof. And I'm like, oh, sweet Jesus. Our family is so strange. And George is like, he's like, Mom, I lit the fire. I'm like, George, you just about burned down the church. And then I had some guys there visiting, some guy, no joke, one of the visitors was like a fire, a fire code guy. Seriously, he was there in Pemba, Mozambique on that day, looking at me. <laughs> this, this should not be allowed. What is the point of all of that? John 17. Jesus says we can bear no fruit unless we're connected to him. But when we're connected to him, there will be much fruit. But what the fruit will look like and how the fruit comes will come through an incredible means that most of us aren't ready for. You know, to this day, my children, our children, our, our congregation, the old mamas, the papas, the visitors, they'll still talk about that message. Nobody will ever forget it. <laughs> Nobody will ever forget it. It was, it was burned into their minds forever. Nobody will forget it. What will it take for us to be one? What will it take for us to be so determined, so ignited by this flame of passion, by this radical love for Jesus, by this radical love for one another, that the world will not deny that we are Christians? What will it take if we were willing to give our lives for the sake of love? What would it look like for us to love so radically that no one would mistake us for anything other than lovers of Jesus? What would it look like on this earth? What would it look like in Colorado for that kind of love to burn on the streets? What would it look like for a people to be so filled with passion that nobody could deny the passion inside of them? It surely would not look like all of us doing the same thing all the time in the same way. It surely wouldn't look like that for the body to really be the body. The surgeon needs to be the surgeon. And there has to be a counter. There has to be a counter. There has to be the entrepreneur. There has to be the artist. There has to be, there has to be the one who lays the carpet or not, depending on the climate, that pours the cement or rakes the sand or puts up the ceiling or cuts the grass to cover us for shade. 
There has to be a people ignited with a passion to do what they were created to do. Fearless lovers, not afraid to shine because they knew who they were. And Satan could never them out. Because if the enemy tried to blow on them, all that would happen is the oil inside of them, the oil of radical intimacy, their love for Jesus would cause them to burn even brighter. Do you want to be a burning one? Ah, is it 9.54? My, I'm, I came from a different time zone. I am so sorry. I'm going to read one more thing. I'm going to pray. Okay, wait. I'm going to pray right now. Shaka Baba. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Lord. I just saw their clock. Oh, sweet Jesus. I'm so, Lord Jesus, you know I really try with time, God, but I didn't see it. You know I'm telling the truth. I really thought, I didn't even think it was nine yet. Lord, I thought it was 8.54 or six, or something. Anyway, God, I'm sorry, especially for the kids, Lord, that are waiting for their parents. So with every eye closed and every heart yielded to God, if you have children waiting for you, get up now and go get them. Our eyes are closed. It's all good. Or if you just need to sleep, off you go. Be blessed. We'll see you in the morning. Oh, and let your heart burn with love for Jesus. Shakaraba. Yes, Lord. Oh, Shakaraba. <laughs> oh, oh, grace, grace, grace. Yes, keep going, keep going. Close your eyes again. Oh, maybe Jake should sing a song. I don't know. But just, let's just, <laughs> I'm going to, I'm I, actually, you know what I'm going to do? It's going to help me. I'm going to keep my eyes closed. We're going to all stand up. Yeah, that helps. And I'm, I am going to invite back the worship team. Come on. Shakaraba. A any one of them who's still here. <laughs> Sharaba she. Thank you, Jesus. And I thank you, Lord, that the kids are going to have grace on their parents. And um, oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for cookies and milk and whatever they're going to do to bless their kids right now. Thank you, Jesus. They'll know they did not forget them. They did not forget them. You will never forget your children. <laughs> oh, Jesus, help us not to forget ours. Thank you, Lord. Shakaraba. Whoo, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you'd never divorce your children. Oh, some of you are like, that's weird, but I'm saying that uh, for, for the older kids in our family <laughs> who we, we found everywhere in every kind of manner, every condition known on the face of a suffering planet. And some of them are still on their journey like the body of Christ. Some of our children, our many, many children, are still on a journey. And God knows their mom and dad are still on a journey, a journey of intimacy, a journey of love, a journey of fruitfulness, a journey of longing to understand power and wisdom and love. Convergence of the streams of God coming together to become that great Ezekiel 47 river that flows through the streets of the city, that flows through the streets of this city. God, we're longing and we're praying and we're looking and we're crying out for radical lovers to rise up, for wisdom and knowledge and love and power to ignite with the passion we have for Jesus. That passion that causes the oil, the oil of intimacy to fill us so that we don't shine like a little light once in a while that the enemy can snuff out in a moment or a storm 
or a conflict or a war, but we shine through the greatest storms. We shine through the greatest wars and the greatest tragedies on the planet. We will continue to shine because you have called us yours. Because you have called us yours, Father. Because you have determined with Jesus that your sons and daughters would come home and that we would be filled with Holy Spirit. And this is what I'm sensing right now in these last few minutes that we're together. I'm sensing that many of you that were listening, um, you knew that you needed oil. You knew that you needed oil and you've asked God to burn and you've asked him for fire and you've asked him to anoint you and to ignite you, but you know that you need more oil. You know you need the oil of intimacy. You know you need the oil of, of intimate love with Jesus. And I'm telling you, the, the, the widow woman in, in the book of Kings, she, she was told by the prophet, gather up the vessels and, and start to pour the oil. And tonight, I feel very strongly that there, there's got to be a move. There has to be a move for those who are longing for this oil. Now, I, I, I can, by the grace of God, I can make you hungry for more. But he is the oil. And what we need right now is oil from Holy Spirit that we would burn, 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 whether we're called to burn in Chicago or we're called to burn in Ohio or burn in Somalia or burn in Colorado. We're called to burn. We need to burn every profession. Every destiny so connected with Jesus and one another that together we start to burn in a way the world has never seen. But this is what I sense. I don't want you to walk to the front. I want you to run to the front and, and just kneel before the Lord and lift up your hands and ask for oil. Ask for oil. I believe tomorrow there'll be impartation and prayer teams, but tonight I believe that there's something, there's something, there's just a different way that I'm seeing tonight. I'm just seeing tonight where, where we as lovers of God, that we would cry out together as the body of Christ, but also individually that we would cry out for oil. That right now you would just lift your hands and you would just lift your hands up and you would ask the one who is the oil giver. You would ask the one who is the oil giver. You would ask Holy Spirit to fill you right now. Come on, Holy Spirit. We're gonna go in, we're gonna go in deeper, deeper, deeper for maybe 10, 10 minutes or so. Um, but we're gonna go in fully present. We're not gonna go in doing something else. We're not going to go in double-minded. We're not going to go in with diversions. We're going to go in. We're going to go face-to-face -face and heart-to-heart -heart with Jesus, and we're going to ask him for what he promised. We're going to ask him for what he promised, but there has to be something inside of us that begins to, to cry out. See, I... I there's, see, this is the hard thing for me right now to get you to understand that there has to be something inside of us that asks, that's passionate. And again, I am, I am the donkey, I'm the postman. We are, we're, we're asking for Holy Spirit to fill us. You ready? 
I feel like we need to cry out. I feel like we need to cry out and say, God, Lord, I hear the prayer of Jesus. Lord, I want to be fruitful, but you need to burn, Lord, inside of me, burn everything out. Come on, Jesus. And let's just, let's just sing our prayers. Let's just sing our prayers out. Whatever you get, whatever you got, Jake, just, we're going to sing our prayers. We're going to get fire tonight, oil tonight. We can't leave the same way. We cannot leave the same way we came in here. We've got to be one. Oh, Jesus. He said, he said that we could, we could have fullness. He said that we could have fullness. We could have the fullness, the fullness, the mystery that has been kept hidden for all ages and generations. But now is disclosed to the saints, to them God has chosen to make known among the Gentiles the glorious riches of the mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. I'm gonna ask tonight, we started this way and I feel like, I feel like we're not supposed to end tonight in a, in a wimpy way. I feel like tonight's about the tenacity, the tenacity of radical lovers of God who will not be denied. The tenacity of radical lovers of God who will not live in a world possessed by the power of a living God, that we could be possessed by Holy Spirit, that we could be so filled with Holy Spirit that as sons and daughters of God, as we move together in radical unity, that Jesus has been crying the very creation of human beings. 